Welcome back to the channel. This is the Ian West Network. And for those that don't know what this is, we do phone reviews or just tech in general. And today we're going to actually review the Moto G Pure, a phone that was recently released under Metro by T-Mobile. This is the variant that we're reviewing today. So for those that aren't familiar with this channel, like, subscribe, follow it, and let's talk some tech. First things first, we are going to talk about the build quality and design of this particular phone. Now, and I already took the phone out of the box, but just to show you what it actually comes with, this is a little slip that goes on top of this, uh, your SIM card, your SIM ejector tool, and your charger. That is literally it. Now, the charger is 10 watt, in case those that wanted to know, coming right out of the box. And we'll talk a little bit about the battery in a little bit. But as for the design, what we have here, if you look at this material, is um, we have, of course, we have a glass front, which is a screen. We have a plastic back and a plastic frame. On the top of this phone, you have the headphone jack. On the side, you have the lock button and you have your volume buttons right here. And as usual with every single Android phone, you have the USB-C on the bottom. And of course, your speakers. Uh, very cheap design. I will say that when you hold it in your hand, it doesn't feel slippery at all. They have this little texturized back where it actually feels very good in the hand. Um, whether this is going to pick up a lot of spots or not, it is going to pick up smudges. But, of course, most people have cases on their device, so you shouldn't have an issue there. Uh, it You can definitely tell that this is the lower end of Motorola phones. I will say that I do like this back better than a Moto One Ace because the One Ace looked very, very cheap in the back but on this particular uh on this particular particular device they did do a better job on the build on the back itself um again when you buy this you could definitely tell that this is like the lowest tier of phones something that is easily breakable well it just it doesn't it has a little bit weight to it but not too much again when you're looking at like a 159 dollar phone which is this price range uh the phone is free when you do it at a new line you can't expect too much. This is like the lowest tier of phones that you can get under the company, along with the uh, Rebel 4, the, the Samsung A01. It's in that category. So you can't expect too much. I mean, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. It looks decent enough. So with that being said, let's hop on to the next category. For the screen resolution, this is what we have here. We have a 6.5 inch IPS LCD screen. So it's no OLED or anything like that. A lot of these phones don't have that, so don't expect it. If you're walking outside and you see a glare on your device, that's what you get. In addition to that, I am not making this up. I wish I was. This is how bright the phone actually gets. This is the brightest. Um, it's not bad, but you can definitely tell that the colors are very washed out if you look at the screen at its brightness. And I'm not going to say that it hurts my eyes because looking at this in the camera, you don't really see the best quality, see it in the best light. But I will say that there are other phones in this price range which definitely have a much better screen by far. Um, but the resolution for this is 720 by 1600. It would have been nice if it was at least 1080. It would be a little easier on the eyes, but it's not. Um, for the PPI people, you have 270 PPI and the ratio is 20 by 9. So, again, uh, it's very cheap. I will say that the touch is responsive, but you can definitely tell that on occasion you might have to swipe an application more than once for it to kind of recognize your command input. So, it's not, again, it's not a high-end phone. This is for, for the most part, for those that are just looking to get themselves into a smartphone. They might have broke their primary phone. You're trying to jump into this, something fast, something simple, and not too cost-effective uh, cost or just something low-priced just to get you by day-to-day. -day. Um, we're going to jump into a little more specifications. I'm trying to keep my opinion out of this until is it worth it section of this video, but I might spill out for the little things from here to here. So like I said, the screen isn't anything too special. Um, you still have that huge chin, right? I'm chin. You still have, yep, that's what it's called. You still have that huge uh, chin right here. The forehead's a little bit smaller, but it had that teardrop design for the for, for those that are, you know, wanted the hole punch on the side over here. It's not going to be with this particular device. So now we're going to jump into the camera. 
what do we have here? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this around so you can go ahead and see the front megapixel camera and all its glory. Uh, what we actually have here after the front camera is going to be, let me get, make sure I have this correctly, five megapixel camera. Uh, it does have HDR, which isn't gonna really make much of a difference because this is an extremely low end camera. In addition to that, it does do 1080p, 30 frames. As for the front, let's switch that around and let's use this Motorola box as an example. Let's say we're in photo mode. This is how good the camera's gonna look. Um, let's go to video and let's actually record a video while we're doing it. So if you saw all that jumping and skipping through the video, that's not the Samsung phone recording through that. That's literally the Motorola phone <laughs> jumping and skipping as it does recording. It only has 1080p, 30 frames for the recording. It is a 13 megapixel wide and a two megapixel secondary camera. So you have your 13 right here, you have your two here, and you have your flash. If you're looking to do some video photography with this device, it is not the best device to do that at all. I cannot stress that enough. If you are a new YouTuber and this is all you have, then it is what you have is what you have to use. But if you're looking to go to graduations, record in uh, low lighting settings, this camera is not good for that. You are gonna need something a little bit newer, preferably in the 40 megapixels, like the next model up, which would be the G Stylus 2020. No, yep, I said it correctly, G Stylus 2021. So in this little section we have here, we're gonna talk about the memory and the chipset itself. So that includes the, uh, the GPU, the CPU, that's in the chipset, which is also the actual process that it's using in addition to the OS. So this phone has three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs internally. Let's get the memory out of the way. Um, about 22 gigs or so is usable out of the internal memory. As a matter of fact, let me go to the settings and show you that as I'm talking to you. About 22 gig, about 20 gigs. And now I did, granted, I did do some updates on this phone. So that's why it says right here that 20.8 gigs is free or so. Let me get the screen out of here because it's really... This picture is really terrible for this camera. It's really bad. Um, so you are getting about 22 gigs out of this. Now, I did try to run a few games off of it, like Call of Duty. Um, that was That's literally a 10 gig game. And it did not run it well at all. So I might even wanna show this for this video. Um, it does ship with Android 11. Now, granted, with, at this price range, I highly doubt this phone is gonna get Android 12. It's possible they may just push it anyway, but it's. I have a feeling that it's not going to be a stable Android 12 if for any reason they decide to actually do an update on this particular device. Now we're talking about the chipset. Get ready, it's a long one. MediaTek MT6766, I'm sorry, 762G, said that wrong. Basically a Helio G25. Um, it is an octa-core and the GPU is PowerVR GE. 8320. And when I say GPU, that's normally the, the actual like Adreno, if you ever heard of those graphic cards that actually help uh, with the gaming and things like that. Again, because this has extremely low end specifications, this isn't a device where you're going to download tons of games on. So if you're in that gaming community, you want to play Genshin Impact, don't even waste your time if you're looking to play near all, I forget, near reincarnation. Call of Duty, Final Fantasy, War of the Visions. No, no, you'll be playing Subway Surfer on this phone. This is not meant for people that have busy lives on their devices. It's not possible to play it on here. Even if you put on the lowest setting, some games will run, sure, but are you willing to sacrifice the frame rate amongst other things just to save a couple of dollars? When granted, you can literally buy another phone such as, I'm going to just throw this out here, the N200 5G, and it's going to run a lot smoother than this particular device. Again, they're out, they're not in the same category when we look at uh, overall specifications. It may seem that way initially, but it is not. This is a three gig phone. The at one is four. That one has a better processor. This one has worse. That one has a better camera, even though they're like both 13 megapixels. It's just a better quality build of a better quality product. So just because on paper things can look very similar, it doesn't mean that the phones are going to be the same. So just keep that in mind when purchasing a device. For the battery, we have a 4,000 mAh non-removable battery, which I don't really need to say non-removable. To be honest, non-removable has been something that's been happening for years. 
Now, some critics say that it's to increase the battery life of your phone. I say that's BS. I say it's simply because the battery is not removable. As a user, we don't have control of actually changing the battery when it dies out. Because if we did, we, a lot more people would not be buying brand new phones. Anywho, it also has 10 watt charging. It comes with a 10 watt charging brick that's actually in the device itself. I'm sorry, in the device that's in the box itself. What I will say is that even if you use a, sometimes phones come with a 10 watt brick, but it gives you the 15 watt rapid charging or turbo charging that Motorola normally has. This does not support that. It only supports a maximum of 10 watts. So it's going to be very slow charging when we compare it to almost any other device in the same category. Uh, what else can I really say about the battery? If we're talking about talk time, I'll say you better get about six hours, seven hours. And I'm just talking about consecutive talk time. It all varies based on the screen brightness, what you're doing on the phone. That's what I got out of it when I was using YouTube along with other things out of it. And that was a full session of me just sitting at Saturday, sitting in front of my computer, really just draining the battery, forcing myself to use this thing. Now, I'm sure you'll see specifications online saying it has a standby time of 3 million days and all that. Listen, normal people use their phone in normal environments. The only type of person that doesn't use their cell phone are those that still own house phones. And that's an entirely different generation of person. This is not going to last you an entire day. Make sure you can you. Oh, my goodness. The thing went out. But I'm going to go ahead and finish talking anyway. Uh, <laughs> make sure that you bring your charger with you when using this particular device. OK. So right here, I'm giving you a little sound test of how loud the speaker is. As you can see, it definitely struggles when you're playing any type of music. I When I turn it up, it makes this muffled bass type sound. Now what's playing in the background is basically YouTube friendly music where I won't get copyrighted. Just so you can hear the quality of the sound. Um, if you're using this in an area on a speakerphone, you're probably going to want to use your headset because the speakers on this particular phone are not loud. Now, granted, I did turn it up completely a moment ago. It's almost completely up. Uh, I don't even have to speak up how louder just to be able to overpower this thing. I'll put it closer. See? I don't have to talk that much louder. I don't have to overpower uh, anything. I could speak, speak in my same voice. Granted, you can still hear me clearly, but it's not a super loud speaker. There are better out there. If we're being completely honest with you, um, call quality wise, it's OK. It's not bad call quality. It's similar to the regular Motorola phones that you would normally find in terms of call clarity. Uh, I will say that with the 4G, this is not a 5G device. It doesn't have the best network signal. Most Motorola phones don't in that category. I don't know what it is about Motorola's, but they have terrible network signals in areas that have low network. If you're in a high volume area you're perfectly fine if you're in a low volume area your networks are going to be a little bit worse than another phone like a samsung or a uh one plus device i noticed that but again when you're paying for a 159 dollar phone free as a new line or upgrade uh, not upgrade but new line or add a line this is what you expect and i don't expect much and i'm glad i didn't because this is a subpar device Thank God we made it to the last section of this video. And this is going to be, is this device worth buying? Absolutely not. If we're talking on a technical standpoint, if you don't have enough money to buy a particular device and you're running on fumes and you just need a phone just to add a line and get a new number or something, because right now they are waiving activation fees for new lines and add a line under Metro. It's normally $20, $25 or so. They're waiving that. So let's say you get this under a new line. The phone is absolutely free. You'd be paying for the 40, 30, 40, 50, or $60 plan. Now, most stores don't want to activate it under 40, or some of them have policies where you do have to do at least a 40 or 50 or higher in order to get that promotional price, which you could change the plan later on if you choose to. But initially, it might cost you a little bit more to get it in the store. So whatever plan you pick, just you'll be paying taxes. I paid on for the $50 plan. Um, after taxes, it was like $58, $59, whatever it was. I don't. No, his taxes are supposed to be that amount, but that's fine. So it was under $60. I did get changed back. Got a brand new phone in the box. Everything comes with it. That's the upside to having this device. Now, 
Let's get into it where I dig into this phone. The downside is that this has a shoddy, terrible camera. If you're porting in, do not look at this device. If you're porting in and this is all they have inside the store, go to another store, a metro, and make sure you don't buy this device if you're porting because you will waste that almost free upgrade. Um, camera is not good. The CPU is mediocre at best. That's saying at best. That means that it's worse than what I'm actually saying. Uh, this phone has insane lag, meaning if you ever use the Stylo 6 for those that like that phone, that was a horrible device where they used a terrible processor, not much RAM in it. It didn't have that much internal memory. I think 64 gigs uh, <clears throat> hard drive inside. It was a shoddy, awful device. This is similar to the Stylo 6. Everything on this just reads Stylo 6 to me. Now, what only makes it justifiable is that this phone is free for a new line. And regular price, it's under $160. That, or it's exactly $160 more so. That's what makes this phone okay to actually purchase. Now, going to a carrier like Metro by T-Mobile, obviously upgrading it is going to be cheaper. This is to, supposed to fight like the Revel 4 or the uh, Samsung AO2. It's in a category, or AO1, I forget the exact name of that phone. But it's in a category where it's in the lowest lowest tier of phones that you can possibly buy. Then the next tier will be your N200. It'll be your uh, Revel V+. Plus. It'll be certain devices in that category. Then the next after that will be your Moto One Ace 5G. You'll have your Moto G Stylus, G Stylus uh, 2021 with 5G. You'll have your Samsung A52 5G. Those devices are more higher end. And then, you know, your iPhones and your high-end Galaxies and things like that which that's, that's when we're going into eight, $900, $1,000 territory. If you're trying to stay below $100 with activation, sure, this phone will be ideal for you, but just be aware that if you're doing any networking, multitasking, things like that, you are not going to have a good experience. The phone is going to be slow. It's going to be laggy. You're going to get that experience when you're texting messages over time. Uh, it's going to like freeze a little bit. And if you hit the home button to get out of an application to switch to another one, if, if you need to do something fast, you're going to experience lag. It's not a good device at all in that aspect. But if you just need to get it through, I wouldn't even, to be honest, let's put this in a different perspective. If you were to buy this for a child, a child would use this phone more than adult. If we're talking about just GPU and gaming, it's still not ideal for that. If anything, the N200, which I forget, it might be $20 or $30. I forget how much it is, maybe 20 or it might even be free. I have to double check that to add a line. That's a much better device with a better GPU. And even that's not enough for a child at times because they want to play things, uh, charge their phone faster. I get it. Money might be tight. You may say, well, it's just it's a child. You know, they don't need the newest thing in the world. I still wouldn't suggest this phone for them unless this was the absolute last thing that you can get. And for those that are, have been in the Metro by T-Mobile family for quite some time, you know what this is to me? This reminds me of the cool pad phone, if you ever remember that. Or the Revel series phones, like the early Revel series, not the V, the uh, V 5G, whatever it's called, or the Plus. This is not a good phone. I cannot stress that enough. Like if I had to use this temporarily while I had to wait for insurance for my current device, I'd cry to myself because it's just, I don't know who this is for. This should not exist, to be honest with you. It should be a certain tier of phones, and that is it. But there's always going to be people that just generally don't download applications. And for those people that don't have Facebook, don't have Instagram, don't download applications, they talk and text, they might use a bank app here and there, this is good enough for them. It has your fingerprint on the back, so it's easy to sign into applications if it requires it or if you add that uh, requirement to your app for added security. Um, I don't believe this has face unlock. Let me double check that now as I'm talking to you to actually see uh, if this thing actually has face unlock. Oh, it does. It does have face unlock. So you can unlock this phone with your face. So, th I mean, that's an upside when you think about it. Like most phones have face unlock in some of these features. But again, if you're buying this for a gift for someone, if they're an older person, I wouldn't even say get that for them. On a simple, let me flip this over so you can see it. I wouldn't even say get that for them on a simple fact. The, the 720p resolution is so bad on this phone for me just looking at it. It's it's an eyesore to actually look at. It's not good. There are ads. You might see ads in your Google feed or your feed through your iPhones or 
or if you look at Yahoo or Amazon, wherever you go, you might see this app, this uh, phone. This is one of the reasons why I purchased it. They tried to say, oh, Motorola released a new phone, the G Pure, and it's for so-and-so. This phone is horrible. I cannot stress that enough. If you like it personally, that's okay. I'm just talking about with the entire network of phones for that current carrier, there's no reason to purchase this in particular. That's it. Now, if you have to, purchase it. You'll be fine. You'll be able to use it. You'll have the issues that I'm talking about. But if you plan on upgrading over time, remember Metro is a six-month thing for upgrades. So you would literally be paying regular price for a phone. That's why I say don't wish your upgrade or new line on this particular phone. Get an A52 if you're porting. It's $100. Get a uh, Motorola One Ace 5G. It's like $20 or $30 for porting. Even get an N10 5G. These are all better devices where the longevity of the device and the quality of the camera and things, you're going to notice it. Everything across the board is going to be better. 90 hertz screen. The A52 has the 120 hertz screen. Unfortunately, the Moto only has the 60 hertz screen, but it has the 750 uh, Snapdragon inside of it processor. So, again, I don't want to rant too much longer in this video. Just be wary of what you buy when you walk into a store. If you, if someone if you walk into a store and you say, well, what's the newest phone out? Or what's a good phone for me? I want to do A, B, C, D, email, this and that, and I want it to work. If they offer you the Moto Pure, turn around, walk out that store, and go to another store so they can offer you something better. At least the N200 minimum. Anywho, that's it. I've ranted long enough. Like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.